Hello world, this is Craig. In this video, I wanted to show you this bus monitor that we have for the SBC85 system. And this is kind of a typical conf configuration. We would have the bus monitor in the back, but you can see the bus monitor is designed so that we can see the displays and we can see the displays on the left-hand side and the switches on the left-hand side over the top of a normal 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter card. What I'm going to do is switch these around so that we can get a better view of the bus monitor. But before I do that, let me show you this card, which is the latest, and this is the prototyping card. We've got three areas here where we have a pad per hole, and those three are surrounded by five volts and zero volt rails between them and on the bottom. And then down here, we have a breakout area that brings all of the bus signals out to a pad. You can put a wire wrap in here, and you can wire wrap this, or you can use point to point whatever your favorite is. The only thing on this that's really pre-configured is over here we've got a power LED and a current limiting resistor. Other than that, we have areas over here and there and all of this sandbox area up here is for whatever design you want to make. Okay, let me turn this off and switch those cards around so we can get a better view of the bus monitor and look at the features. When I tell people we have a bus monitor board for this, the first question I get from those that haven't used them before is what in the world is a bus monitor? What do you get out of it and what's it worth? Well, basically what the bus monitor does is we can see across the top, we have LEDs that show us the bus status. These are all of the address lines from A15 up here down to A0 down there. So these are the four nibbles of the address. Then we also have the data byte down here. So this is the high nibble and the low nibble of the data byte. And fundamentally, that's what a bus monitor is going to do is tell us what's going on in the bus. In this one, in addition to just having the binary LEDs, it's really convenient to have hexadecimal display of the same value. So we can see that right now, this nibble is the same as that. It's a one, this is a B, this is an E, and these guys are going so fast, it's in a very tight loop here. It looks like they're all on, but I can see by looking at this that some of these are brighter than others. The data lines are all kind of flickering so these are uh, just it's going through the values so quickly we can't see what they are so obviously the bus monitor isn't all that useful unless we can slow this down and see what's going on and so in that case we have a single step mode so let me go ahead and restart this program by pushing the reset button and we can run this using the single step button over here so this button this switch if it's in the up position that is run and our little run LED turns on. If it's in the center position, that single step, and now we're in single stepping mode. And every time I press this button over here, it will advance to one machine instruction. Okay, we can see the one C, that's in the ROM. Now it's up in doing a RAM access. One C, we're back down into the ROM, RAM, back and forth again. Okay, and as we press that, we can see that we're cycling through the program. Again, let me go, go back to the very beginning, zero, zero. That's all I have in my lower EEPROM is just a jump to the upper EEPROM. So there's our, so zero, zero, zero was C3. The first address is zero, zero. The next address is one, zero. So we can see that it's going to do a C3, one, zero, 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 and it's going to jump up to 1,000. We go up to 1000, there's the first instruction, F3. So we can see every time we push this, we advance to the next memory location. We're going right now from one bus cycle to the next bus cycle, and it's showing us the address and the data at each location. Over here on the left-hand side, we have status lines. These are all of the status lines coming off the CPU. So we have the S0, S1, we have the hold, the hold acknowledge, the interrupts, We've got the SID and SOD lines coming out here. We've got all the restarts. So anything that's on the CPU or on the back plane bus, we have coming out here to these status LEDs. Now, sometimes it's inconvenient. If you're not interested in all the parts of the program, it's inconvenient to have to sit here and push the single step button. So what I've added on this is a little 555 timer down here that will do what I call a slow step. So if we put this in the lower position, now it slow steps by itself from one machine instruction to the next. And if we want to, we can adjust the speed of that with this little potentiometer. We can go up to about 60 hertz on this, or we can go down to uh, maybe half a hertz or so. And you can adjust those with the RC values on the 555 timer if you don't like those speeds. 
would pretty much sum up a basic bus monitor, have the ability to display in binary, be a nice feature to have it also be able to display in hexadecimal, and then have a single step button, and then the slow step button is kind of an added feature that I don't remember seeing in the bus monitors back in the, in the day. But I wanted an, another feature on this for when I'm doing diagnostics on hardware and software, and that is, you know, if we look at the 8085, the 8085 tells us at the beginning of each bus cycle what kind of a bus cycle that's going to be. Is that an opcode fetch? Is it a memory read or a memory write? Or is it an IO read or an IO write? Is it interrupt? Or what, exactly what is that bus cycle that's about to come up? So what I've put onto this board is the ability to filter our single steps depending on what bus cycle we have coming up. And that's what this row of LEDs across here is telling us. Right now we have this green LED on, which is saying, go from any machine instruction to any machine instruction. So don't worry about what type of machine instruction it is or what type of bus cycle it is. Just every time we see the address latch enable, stop and go into the single step mode. And by single step mode, I mean either the slow step mode or it could actually be a formal single step where it's going to wait for us to press this button. So right now with this on, every machine cycle is going to wait for us to press the button because basically we have this guy on and we're saying don't filter the types of machine cycles. We put it back into slow step and we have a switch over here. It's a little BCD encoder. We can turn this switch and every time we turn this switch, we can see one of these different LEDs turn on up here. And each of those LEDs represents a different type of filter for when to trigger the single step. So we're back into the any. We can do this next one, which is a red light, which says basically turn off all of the filters. And so right now we can see that it has jumped up and it's now running a very tight loop that's at 1BE something and the data is changing so quickly because right now all of the single stepping is off. It's going essentially at full speed between those values. Let's go on to the next selection, and this is a memory write. So in this case, it's only going to stop when it gets to memory write, and obviously there's not a memory write in that little tight loop. So let me restart the program again, see if we can get to a memory write. So now it's doing memory writes because this is the RAM area, 2000 is the RAM area, and so it's doing memory writes because it was pushing the stack pointer up onto memory. What it's doing right now, I happen to know, it is doing a countdown, and so it's doing a memory write, but it did a countdown for a delay for the serial port, and so it's jumping from memory write to memory write, and it's writing to this memory 2004, and that's the data that it's writing to that memory. Right now it's doing another countdown and then it's going to do another little bit of memory writes. And this is all because it's doing an ASCII output to the terminal. We could also do the same thing for memory reads. We say jump from one memory read to the next memory read. And we can see it's doing parts of the code space, which is down in the 1000. So right now it's doing code space. And then occasionally it jumps up into RAM and it does a read out of the RAM. So it might be doing a, a, a pop of the stack pointer, or we'd have to look up to see exactly what it's doing there, but it's doing a read out of the RAM. So it's it's jumping now from any memory read to any memory read. Now this will exclude opcode reads. Opcode reads are different. In fact, they've got their next setting. If we change this again, we can see that yellow LED turns on. Now it's strictly jumping between opcodes. So we could look these up and look at this address, and each of these are opcodes. This isn't just a generic memory read. These are only opcode fetches. So in this mode, it's jumping from off code fetches, and we can restart the program again. We can start, let me put it back in a single step. Restart the program. This is our first op code, C3. That's a jump to the higher memory space. So if we let it go ahead and advance, now we can see the next op code, we've jumped up to the memory space. We're at 1000, and the first instruction is F3. So we can see in this case, it's jumping from op code to op code or more accurately, it's jumping from opcode fetch to opcode fetch. Okay, the next one is going to be turning the filter off again. And so if I clear this, get it out of that, that step, now the filter is off and it's running essentially at full speed. We can see things over here flickering a bit. That was the sod line that just turned off and it's, it 
finished writing its message to the display and now it's waiting for an input from the user. We can then go to the I.O. reads and writes. We start it again. This is the I.O. write. And in this part of the program, I think there might be an I.O. write way up high when it gets further onto the memory. There it goes. Now we've gotten into a little part of that tight loop again where we're at 1BE something and it's, we're jumping now from I.O. write to I.O. write. We can do I.O. reads. And the same thing, it'll, uh, after a while, it'll go up until it hits I.O. read and then it will stop then and it will start single stepping past those I.O. reads. Then the last LED is for a uh, an inter for the interrupts. Okay, so let's go back to any mode. So right now it's going to go from any machine instruction to any machine instruction, and it's, it's stopping momentarily until this guy, until the 555 kicks it back into play. And again, we can slow that down uh, if it's easier to see. All right, well, that's really nice to be able to filter what type of a bus cycle we want it to jump in the single step but we also put four registers on this so we have a command port and then we have three data ports well the the three data ports let me do first we have a data port for breakpoints we can put a value in for the most significant byte of the address the least significant byte of the address or the data so we can put breakpoints in for those three and then we can tell it do we want it to match that address exactly do we want it to match either the high address or the low address, or do we want it to match the data? So we can have it put in breakpoints, and when it satisfies any of those breakpoints, it will go into the single step mode. So normally what would happen is in the software, we can load those values for the breakpoints. We can kick this thing into full speed mode using the command port. We can override the breakpoint. We can override the single step switch. We can kick it into full speed, and then as soon as it gets to that breakpoint, it'll stop back out and then either go into the single step mode or the slow step mode, depending on the position of this switch. That's the purpose of three of those registers for the high byte, the low byte, and the data byte for the breakpoints. Very convenient. So you basically in the software, you can tell it to run full speed until it gets to a certain address value or until it sees a certain data byte come or go, and at that point, it'll enter into the breakpoint mode. So the base address on this is the configuration address. And on that we have, we can configure what type of the breakpoint we want it to stop at. We can also, through software, replace the manual control of the switch. So in software, we can turn the filter for the various bus cycles. And finally, in the command register, we can also toggle this little speaker so we can get this thing to make some noise by outputting the frequency to that speaker. All right, well, that's pretty much the bus monitor tour. We have the binary values of the address at the top. We've got the data binary here and the hexadecimal display of the same thing. We have all of the LEDs for the bus filters here, a little bit of status indicators for the board itself, and then status indicators for the bus and the microprocessor over here on the left-hand side. This is our BCD switch to select the filter. This is our potentiometer, it's this little finger potentiometer. We can either use this little one turn or have a four turn version. There's a footprint that you can use either footprint uh, for that. We can see here there's a dual footprint. You can use either a either of those two potentiometers for that. Uh, these are all of our hex decoders for the seven segment display. These are bus uh, buffers so that we don't overload the bus. This all, everything here only represents one LS loading on the on the back plane. And then we have a bunch of glue logic and latches and so forth for the single step and the display of the values. All right, well, that is what I wanted to tell you about this bus monitor. And we're getting fairly close to releasing these files for build. This is version 1.1. And I found a, a mistake on this that somehow slipped through my schematic. And so I am replacing this with version 1.1b. It was a really subtle mistake and change. So I'm, I'm uh, not going to anything more than just a, a letter revision on that. So hopefully 1.1b will be a value, will be a version that I'm going to release for download. And uh, hopefully that'll be in the next, uh, sometime in April. Okay, well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions on this, I would appreciate your feedback. Let me know what you're thinking. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.